Thank you very much. Uh, thanks. Yes, I work at the University of Warsaw, uh, but this wasn't always the case. Um, I used to work as a data steward in a different uh, private university, so that's why I've decided to speak about being a data steward, because as um, Obrad mentioned already, um, this magical phrase, there is lots of extra work when we talk about uh, research data and research data management, and that always sounds scary. And I think for researchers, it is important to know that a data steward is someone who is there to help, not to just make them write a data management plan and so on, but to be helpful. And I wanted to speak to not only research support staff here, who could be, uh, of course, data stewards, but also to researchers who might take up a role of being a data steward in their institute, in their faculty, in their project, and so on. And I hope this would be something useful for you to hear from my perspective. So taking a peek behind the role of a data steward. So we have the role um, that is quite huge. You've all probably seen this little graphic, which is um, um, introducing the idea of, a, of data stewardship in general with fair principles in the middle. But if you look at it, there are so many tasks and task areas, and they, of course, come with different competences. You have to be involved with developing and implementing policies on the institutional level and outside of your institution, maybe on the level of your project team or faculty. Um, you have to be creating channels of communication between the researchers, between different departments, such as IT department, um, uh, such as software developers, uh, researchers and policy makers, and so on. So bridging the gaps between different stakeholders. And um, you should be able to also enable the researchers to learn and implement the research data management practices in their research, in their projects. On top of that, you have to participate in a lot of initiatives, ideally, and that alone can take up a lot of time. Uh, so a, a full a work week, I would say you could easily spend on being involved in all the activities. And you should be advocating for open science in general. And that's not all. So, for example, when I worked um, in, a, in my previous uh, job, I was a librarian. And then one day we got an email to the library that there is going to be an institutional open access policy. And we have to appoint a data steward or hire a person who would be a data steward for the institution. Of course, um, that was just a few years ago. In Poland, there were no such people who could just be uh, harvested from the market as data stewards because that was not a profession, an existing profession. So we appointed a data steward within the library and it was myself. Um, and that was really difficult. I didn't even know where to start because looking at something like this, why, how would you even go around this? Um, uh, so this was a challenge for me um, right away and I started researching. So my, um, uh, my view on that is that it is a very, very complex role. And the question is, can one person be all this? And I think that rather not, not really. Um, ideally, there should be a team of people. Uh, so discipline specific data stewards, data curators, IT specialists, lawyers, researchers who are knowledgeable about different standards, different practices, and so on. But this is rarely the case. And quickly, I learned that this is not only my perspective, but the perspective of people across the country. Mm, they all were sort of appointed a new role on top of their tasks that they already had, and they had to start doing it. So um, we were all in a similar situation and we were lucky enough to create a little community and exchange ideas. And there were librarians, but there were also researchers who had to take up this role in, for example, a European project. And that was a difficult task for them to do. So the good thing is that a data steward is not a regulated profession. Um, I'm saying it's a good thing. It would be nice if it was a regulated profession, but uh, we know how it is. There are many definitions of a data steward, and there is no one way of becoming a data steward. So one way to look at it is um, that we can have different types of data stewards. For example, a generic data steward who would be for the whole institution, for example. It would be a person who is a part of central services of the institution. 
For example, a person in the library, a person in the IT department, a person in the research support or administration, and they would serve all disciplines. I was such a case of a data steward, one person for the whole institution. Then we can talk about embedded data stewards. So they would be people who would serve specific research discipline or maybe a cluster of disciplines. They would be experts on the level of a faculty, of a department, on a project level, and so on. And these people could be, for example, appointed, appointed within the project and just manage data in one project. And those are, of course, very different roles, being in the generic data steward and being a project level data steward. But um, I think they all have uh, lots to handle. Uh, so the, rea the reality is that sometimes it is, of course, possible within one institution to um, start building a huge competence center, uh, a network of data stewards, for example, from different disciplines, or an office of data stewards with one coordinator and multiple data stewards. But usually it, it, it does start with one person being assigned new tasks on top of their current role. And I wanted to talk about a typical scenario, and I'm taking that from my experience and experience of my colleagues across Poland. So a place to start would be to ask yourself a question who you are, and, and not in a philosophical way, but just to get an idea of, um, if you are a researcher, that's gonna be different for you. If you are research support staff, probably as well, because that comes with where you are based. Are you based in the library? Are you based in the research department or faculty, IT center, and so on? Because these positions have different impact, different possibilities, different financing, most of all. For example, if you are in the project, you will have financing for the project. So to create sustainable materials and services, that might be more challenging than creating sustainable materials and services within the library. Uh, however, uh, I can say that because of my previous role as a librarian, library is not the uh, most well-funded part of the university usually, um, and uh, it's not um, easy to introduce new ideas from the level of a being just a librarian. Uh, so. Um, Another thing here would be what I mentioned before, are you a general um, data steward for the institution or embedded? And do you have support that comes with it? That means the decision makers of your institution or some team members that you will be accompanied by. Then uh, we go into learning stage, let's say. And I would say um, uh, the most important is at this stage to research, analyze, and consult similar institutions to yours. By similar, I mean comparable by size, comparable by advancement in open science practices, comparable by the region, and so on. Because we would all like to be at the level of, for example, the Netherlands or the UK, but we're not, and we have to start somewhere. So I think finding an institution that is similar to yours, maybe even cooperating on some levels, is um, uh, is uh, maybe a good idea. And I'm saying institutions, but I also mean maybe teams, departments, faculties, and so on, or even uh, projects. Uh, then it is always a good idea to look at those advanced institutions just to get a bigger picture and see where we are going, what we would like to achieve and what we wouldn't, what would be beneficial in our case and what wouldn't. It is always a great idea to join events like this, which you are just organizing, which is amazing, um, and to join local and international communities, boot camps, courses. There are examples of free um, boot camps, for example, like the first link that I'm uh, linking here. That's the open air bootcamp, for example, for the trainers, but there are some paid options as well. For example, the University of Vienna has a data steward course in English. So maybe that's something to look at as well. Then I think there is time to make a plan. So look at the perspective of others, not your, your own perspective. So you would ask yourself a question, who is your community that you are talking to? And what are their obligations? So are you talking to all the researchers? Are you talking to your colleagues? Are you talking to a small team of people? Who are they and what do they need to do? For example, what are they obliged to do by their funders? 
Do they have to open data? Do you have to, do they have to create data management plan? There might be multiple things and they will look for help with that and you should be able to help them. Um, of course, the needs are, might be a separate thing from obligations, so it's also worth considering those. And then we have to check what resources we have to do all this. We don't need to create everything from scratch, but I think that's obvious. There are so many materials in English, sometimes it is enough to just link them or to translate some of them, and they are just ready to go. Um, but also, I think it is very important to be able to start a discussion and involve others within the institution or even outside the institution. But um, it is a key for um, especially a generic data steward to speak with decision makers at your institution. Uh, for example, um, I would recommend one tool that is a good conversation starter, I would say, and it's called RICE model. So the Research Infrastructure Self-Evaluation Framework. It is created by the Digital Curation Center UK. And uh, that uh, you can do it yourself. So use the tool and that provides a framework for discussion and to, um, to engage um, other stakeholders to contribute their experience to whatever you need to create. So um, it is just easier to take that as a functioning tool and then bring it to the table and have others join the conversation on the institutional level. Um, that uh, actually worked quite well for me and I it kind of gave me a structure of what to do regarding the planning and it can be uh, it can be on the level of the whole institution but also uh, way less than that for example a team then at this stage um, probably no one knows who a data steward is in the institution in a team and so on so um, it is important to address that first because people have to understand that a data steward is a useful person. Um, it is good to make use of existing communication channels and set up our own channels, but this is also a question of sustainability, how we can manage that. It is good a good idea to keep it simple. So for example, creating a simple FAQ page rather than an essay on uh, data stewardship and then um, uh, try, to, um, uh, try to make people read that. Um, and like I said, the obligations come first. So the most common motivation for researchers, for your colleagues, will be, for example, to write a DMP because their funder requires them to do just that. So um, I would say it is a good idea to get in touch with whoever is dealing with that in the institution or within the faculty and um, uh, tell them that you can help, that you are there to take care of just that. And the last thing, an example of Poland, we, like I mentioned in the beginning, um, created a little competence center. So it's kind of like a working group of data stewards in Poland. Many people started just like that. They were, for example, librarians or researchers, and suddenly they had to take up a role of a data steward. And they reported similar challenges. And they were, for example, that it is too much for one person, uh, too many competences to have, too many skills to learn, too many disciplines to handle for one person. And having a team is a must. Within that team, it is great to have a lawyer. It is great to have an IT specialist, but we know how that works. Um, uh, there is also there was also a problem with limited local learning opportunities. There was nothing in Poland that could prepare you to take up the role of a data steward. There were only um, international initiatives. So um, bringing that to a local landscape was a challenge as well. For example, with legal issues that were different for Poland comparing to somewhere, for example, in Austria. Um, it was also uh, difficult to just start being something what is unclear. The role wasn't specified, nowhere. Uh, we just had to build it by ourselves for um, so that it fits Polish, um, Polish landscape. And the last thing was a lack of support from decision makers. It was required kind of to um, bring a data steward to the institution, so that happened. But then there was not much support from the decision makers as for how to sustain that. Um, and my uh, one key message is that it is very important to have a community, community of people who are data stewards, community of people who deal with data management, community of researchers who have to manage their data within one discipline. That's really helpful. And it is a good idea to start just there and learn from each other. 
And that's all. I will post my slides in a second to the chat and I am happy to answer any questions. Thank you.